All right, let that load up. But um, back in season five, you know, the Doctor comes back from being erased from all of time and space and all this. And um, they, he said, you know, something caused us. Something caused the TARDIS to explode, and silence will fall. They never actually answered why the TARDIS exploded. Mm. But uh, here's one: uh, why go to the why go through the trouble of putting River in the lake? Uh, yeah, good question. Let's see. The explanation in, under that is okay. So the Silence want to kill the Doctor. They know that he's going to be a mon- a monstrously tough target. So they go through the trouble of scavenging technology to build the spacesuit we see in The Impossible Astronaut and The Wedding of River Song. They take Melody and program her to be the Doctor's perfect assassin, but she escapes. Several years later, the Silence track her down and force her back into the suit and er, put her in Lake Silencio. Why? We know that Utah is a still point in time, which explains the location, but why dump her in the water? Was it just a freak Amy and Rory out? Or just to freak Amy and Rory out? And isn't that a bit peculiar? Maybe they're just erased in, or maybe they're just erased with a sense of drama. Or maybe it was the fact that America signed a contract with BBC and they just needed to have a trip to America to solidate the deal. Or something, I don't know. But uh, here's another one. Here's a good one. <coughs> and this one kind of made me go, huh. Speaking of the incident at Lake Silencio, did it really take the doctor 200 years to come up with that escape plan? Because if you think about it, the last time we saw him before he went over to Lake Silencio was um, he was 900 and something. Well, when we saw him again, he was 1103. Is making my dra- brain dribble out my ear. <laughs> there are too many people with way too much time on their hands and taking it way too seriously. Okay, here's another one for you. What's going on with the photos of Happy Amy and Baby Melody? Huh? Do you remember back in, I think it was either the Impossible Astronaut or Day of the Moon when they go to the orphanage and uh, Amy walks into a room, she sees um, on the on a uh, shelf or something, there's a bunch of pictures of her smiling, holding a baby. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. She she hadn't had the baby by that point. And even then, uh, once she did have the baby, when would she have had the time to take that picture? Maybe she gets another chance. Maybe it's from another reality. <laughs> this one's kind of silly. How does drawing tally marks on your face help? Surely that's an awkward place to mark yourself. You'd need to carry a mirror around with you at all times. Very true, but I suppose some markers leave that feeling, so you'd sort of go, ooh, that itches a little bit. Yeah, but then you'd scratch them all off. Well, that's true, unless you had, like, extremely great self-control. Okay, so this one I can't read the description to because this would technically fall under um, the heading of spoiler. But what's going on with Madame Kavarian? Um, she's a bitch. Well, yeah, but I mean, think about it. There's this woman that we know absolutely nothing about, and suddenly she just comes out of nowhere. She's like the human assistant of this organization called The Silence, and she wants to kill the doctor. But she's like got a vendetta, but no one knows why. No one knows anything about her. She just came out of nowhere, and she's like, I'm going to kill the doctor. Um, maybe she's another reincarnation of River. I thought about that, but I mean, she kind of gave all her regenerations away, so. Mm. Well, I don't know. It's all just crazy, crazy, crazy. And then, let's see, um, I can't read that one. Can't read that one. Oh wait! Oh no, I can kind of read this. One. Yeah, I can read this one because this is uh, technically a spoiler for season five. So if you haven't seen season five, why the hell are you listening to us? <laughs> Whatever happened to the eagle? Evil League of Eagle? <laughs> evil League 
of evil. <laughs> wow. Do you remember the big monster team at the end of the Pandorica opens? They seem to have fairly big plans for the Doctor, but after the end of Season 5, we've not heard a peep from them. Was their alliance a one-time deal? Who organized it? Are they still out there? And do they have monthly meetings where they get together over drinks to discuss anti-Time Lords <laughs> leaflet <laughs> campaigns? <laughs> As I said, there are people with way too much time on their hands. <laughs> Let's see. Um, this one's kind of an interesting one. Um, do you remember in The Lodger when um, they were trying to build a, uh, or this thing was trying to build what looked like a TARDIS? Uh, no. It was um, the spaceship thing that was cloaking itself as a second floor and needed uh, pilots, but if the doctor touched it, it would rip a hole in the universe. I believe you. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> that made a second appearance in uh, Day of the Moon. No, The Impossible Astronaut, I think. One of those. I don't remember. Anyway, I think it was The Impossible Astronaut. Um, but we got no explanation for uh, why that was there. Nothing. Mm. We still don't know exactly what the silence is. We know that it's a religious order, and the, man the mantra they use is silence will fall, or silence... Uh, when the question is, is asked, the silence will fall. Yes. And then the question, which we can't talk about. And finally, and most crucially... Why was there a duck pond with no ducks in the 11th hour? Because it was winter and they'd flown south for the winter. That's too easy. <laughs> or maybe it was duck season instead of wabbit season. Wabbit season. <laughs> duck season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so knowing all of that... <sighs> How exactly would you rate the season overall? Um, I've got to take a lot of things into account. See, I'm not that much of a Matt Smith fan. I really like Amy, mm. you know, or Karen or whatever, but eh, Matt Smith, eh. He's kind of handsome in a suit with tails, but that's about yes. it. <laughs> you know, eh. Overall, I reckon this season's about a four. You know, not the best probably, one we've ever had. Yeah, I would probably give it a five just for the fact that there were so many episodes that left me sitting there going, really? <laughs> I just, I didn't, I didn't feel satisfied. You know, because Doctor Who, like, even with um, season five with Matt Smith, like him or not, it did leave you with a kind of satisfied feeling, even though there were questions dangling off. But yeah. um, yeah. I felt really satisfied, you know, everything came together and worked and all this, but this one, there were just way too many episodes where I sat there just feeling disappointed. Or going, I so picked that like three episodes ago. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. definitely. And I mean, um, now, Stephen Moffat promises that there won't be any disappointments next year, but he kind of promised that for this one, too, so it's kind of hard to take a guess. He shouldn't make promises like that because there's no way you're going to make everybody happy. No. I mean, I guess if you can make a big majority of them happy, then that's a good thing. And for the most part, a majority of people. I don't think I have talked to... I've talked to maybe one person out of all of my friends, out of all the people that I know that watch Doctor Who. One person liked um, the season finale. Mm. And I was just like, I cannot, I, I just can't get behind it. The Doctor would never resort to that. Not the old one, anyway. Yeah, oh, I don't know. It's all a bit crazy. But, you know, we've been talking about cars and doctors for over half an hour. Seriously? Seriously. And and I want my TV show to talk about. Eh. I saw it. That's alrighty. Okay, so I watched episode two of The One. 
Australia, <laughs> Australia is set for the most gifted psychic. And guess what? What? They all sucked this week. Yay! <laughs> their big challenge. <laughs> their big challenge was they had seven minutes to find a fugitive on a speeding train using a dropped backpack. Mm. So this Faco fugitive dude had dropped his backpack on the way onto the train to go and escape. He'd stolen some diamonds and they were to find him on... Well, they basically restricted it down to like two carriages. And anyone who's seen Victorian or New South Wales, I'm not quite sure which state it is, public transport, their trains actually have three levels. So it's kind of like, that's a little bit annoying. 